We're recording. Hello, everybody out there on Internet Land. Um, today is Monday, the 9th of September, 2019, and you have tuned in to the exciting weekly meeting of the IPFS Documentation and Developer User Experience Task Force. My name is Jessica, and I am your unofficial official host for this week. Without any further ado, um, I wanted to welcome a new addition to our to our pain of, of Brady Bunch people. So Terry, do you want to introduce our new friend? Thank you for saying Brady Bunch because I haven't clicked that button yet. Now we are the Brady Bunch. Yeah, um, Jill joined our team at the end of last week and we're super excited. He works for Moxie. Jill, why don't you introduce yourself and the kind of stuff you've been working on in this space? Okay, so uh, I've been working at Moxie for about a year now, and I've worked on something related to to PL uh, earlier. I was in the in the Nomius and IDM project, and now I'll be joining the Terry and and helping out with uh, Protoscore. All right, we're super excited. Obviously, sad to lose Diogo, but so happy to have have Jill with us. So. Super excited. He's got, got a PR in already to tweak some stuff, so it's awesome. Molly's impressed. Look at that face. <laughs> All right. Um, just running through our agenda really quickly because we have a lot of stuff on the agenda this week, so I'm going to talk real fast and it's going to be annoying. Um, launched. What's this helpful metrics for our current docs, Mr. CW? Yeah, we'll dive straight in. Um, a nice little feature addition that we try to um, sandwich into our current existing platform so we can get some metrics. Um, basically, we want to see what documents are currently working for us and what aren't, so we can draw some attention to, start, uh, to upgrade them. Uh, so let me share my screen very quickly. Um, this is the PR that got in. Um, it will continue to be improved, but it, as a first version, it's just added this tiny little uh, uh, action point at the bottom of every document on the current IPFS docs. Oops, no, sorry. IP. I can't type today. <laughs> there we go. Um, why is this should just be on auto complete? I don't know what happened. But anyway, so if you go through uh, the documentation, uh, every page now you'll get the interaction to see whether this was helpful or not. Um, I'm just clicking on it so I don't skew the metrics. Um, and what we're doing now is propagating that up to our, our analytics profile. Um, and I've recently discovered Google Data Studio so we can actually have an analytics metric uh, dashboard so we can start with this. So this is like a, a little overview of uh, currently um, where we're at with uh, the documentation that's been helpful or not. So we've got 16 interactions since Friday um, and only one unhelpful documentation. So we'll have to look at that. But. Uh, so that's that feature. Um, what else was there? All right. Anything else we should know? Not for now. I think we're, so there was a PR to extend and improve that, which is, so if someone says no, we can actually then link out to an issue uh, so we can capture more information because obviously just having a, a thumbs up, thumbs down is not uh, as actionable as we'd like. So um, the next step will be to improve that too, so we can have some feedback directly. Um, one thing, um, one thing that I, I noticed as I was going through, um, you know, it's nice that we're able to pick these up on hash links. So if somebody links to like halfway down a really lengthy page, um, that's at least giving us a slightly better idea of, of the inbound. Um, and we'd all talked about this um, last week a little bit. There's a, there's somewhat of a caveat on this in that we do have like some very, very, very lengthy pages in our documentation, you know, like the API guide. So there are going to be a few pages where you've got like a huge, huge amount of information and then like You're frozen, Jessica. Jessica, Eric, turn your turn your thing around. You're clearly sitting in the same place. Are you on? Yeah, yes. Eric, she just fine. crashed. Hey, everybody. Oh, I crashed too. What? We can, we can hear you from Eric's computer. Your faces just aren't moving. You can talk to us if you want. No, no, you can't. All right. 
Oh dear. Let's Back to 4G. Our, <laughs> let's find the... Find Where the are we in the agenda? Let's uh, see. Max platform features inventory. That's probably what they were trying to talk about. Docs platform tech stack slash framework. Do you want to talk about that, Chris, while we wait for them to reappear? Absolutely. Um, yeah, so I think to summarize now, I've, I've written a bit more of a lengthy description in the doc, in the, note, um, the, the notes, um, but essentially I've been looking at mainly two front runners, um, most likely Docusaurus for getting uh, uh, our guides into a platform that we're familiar with that uses a, a Webpack and React uh, framework, so it'd be very familiar for us to continue um, developing on top of that. Um, uh, much more impressed with the V2 outline, and they're starting to use the DocSource V2 on some of the internal Facebook um, products themselves, but obviously it's not feature parity with version one. And if we need to do a, a, a little roadmap um, outline to see whether what we need in terms of like our features for, for launch. So the, the priority of the main things that are missing right now um, are the uh, the versioning uh, documentation. So you can actually create branch, branch versions, which is something that we would like to do for IPFS. Um, it is coming, it's on the roadmap. And then internationalization, which has also not been completely spec'd out in V2. Um, so those two, those are two of the major pitfalls. Um, uh, we could work with the alpha branch for now and uh, basically get something that's better than what we currently have and improve our searching. Um, uh, but there's no clarity against like how long it would take for that to uh, those features to be developed. And from speaking to the community and looking inside uh, some of the, the issue queues, it seems like it's more, it's still very much a side project for core members that are working on it. Um, so it's not, there's no, no full-time development uh, assignment to it. So it could be that we can contribute back, of course, and we decide that we're going to use this uh, across more of our products and it's a, a viable use of our time. But um, it also, I'm looking at other options to see whether or not we could uh, find something that will give us a shortcut. And so ViewPress is also uh, quite interesting. It's different, different approach because it's um, most of our, our apps and front end stuff is actually in React, so it would be a, a new way of doing things. But that also is missing one key feature, which is versioning as well. So someone has done a third party um, plugin for it that kind of works, but it's not part of the core um, framework. So uh, either of those things, it's not the pros and cons to both. So um, my proposal, now we've got some of the other features merged and out of the way, uh, it's just some building a little spike against the two of them. So we can start to compare how how, which one like, like we, we prefer uh, to start with and which one will be worth the, the major effort. As we said originally for the OKR, it's more to get this um, defined. Uh, so we've got a rough outline for Q4 so we can then develop uh, and put our energy into whichever platform we choose to go ahead with. Uh, either of these will be great solutions compared to actually rolling our own using something like a Gatsby and completely migrating uh, everything across for ourselves. That'll be way more development effort than uh, we, we currently have to assign to it. So um, I'm quite confident that we'll, we'll, we'll have a, a solution in place. It's just like with that tallied with the card sort exercise that we did on Friday, um, we're gonna start to put together some interesting plans and uh, the big, outline for this is that we are going to run this in parallel with the existing doc. So we're going to start to migrate to a brand new platform and have like a beta rollout. So we'll integrate the feedback and some nice feedback mechanisms to, uh, to create that whole sort of beta framework. So, um, but that's all to be defined. <laughs> cool. We jumped, we jumped past you, Jessica and yeah. Eric. So feel free Bye. to take us back to what you were trying to tell us. Yeah. Sorry about that. There was this sort of some massive Wi-Fi something like my whole computer restarted. The wasps are back. Weird. Yeah, the wasp unplugged the router. Yeah, exactly right, right. Totally the wasp. wasp attack. <laughs> so, so I think I think I was talking about lengthy pages and the in the is this helpful when when we probably disappeared, which is probably self-explanatory. Um, the other thing was that on Friday, um, a bunch of us got together and did a card sort exercise um, to on the existing IPFS docs.ipfs.io navigation. This is sort of um, an extension of the content audit stuff. Um, so if, if we jump up to the recurring item content audit, um, Eric did an amazing job of going through the content, content inventory that we inherited from Porsche um, and turning massive amounts of that into GitHub issues. There's still some open questions and we're going to go through those together um, in, in person since we're like both in the same space. 
on Monday and Tuesday. Um, and then also the other thing we want to do in person is work on um, the answer to some of the conversation that came up in the card sort. I think we got a lot of really, really good insights. Um, I'll link to the test plan for um, for, for all of our Q3 docs efforts. And you can, um, from that test plan, you can go through and see um, all the all the artifacts for the card sort, um, both the mural doc that we ended up on at the end of that activity, and then some of the notes that we took and some of the questions that we asked. Um, so super, super exciting. Um, moving on to the second recurring item, um, the docs platform features inventory. Um, looking through that list, it sounds like we've pretty much got everything that we wanted to get into that document in that document. So one of the things that we're hoping to do this week is um, just solidify that into something that's a little bit more final so that um, you know, for Q Q4 type efforts, you know, that, that starts to get into an effort, um, into activities of starting to solidify that into GitHub issues, both for um, features implementation and then also for, you know, however, however you, Chris, want to um, lay out for project management purposes, your GitHub issues for actually um, building out the new platform. Um, let's see. We're Lots great. of help wanted tags. Yes, <laughs> yes. So I think, I mean, I know that, that our, our Q4 or our, our Q3 OKR around the platform um, features inventory was to get down on paper all the things that we wanted in the new platform and then to some degree as, as possible um, prioritize those and get them into something that we can just start cherry picking the issues when we, when we have a, a platform to start building on. So that's well into, into um, spec to be finished by the end of the quarter without any problems, which is awesome. Um, Let's see, Chris, you talked through the next item on the agenda, which was the docs platform tech stack and framework. Thank you. Um, recurring item, hire documentation specialist. Um, we are starting to make some progress on this, which is great. Um, um, we have a couple of very strong candidates. I need to talk with um, both the, the mini hiring panel of the folks who did the interviewing, um, as well as the formal hiring panel um, about how best to proceed. It may be that we end up um, you know, actually functionally being able to combine this into the Filecoin doc, uh, not the same role, but the, to combine the candidates into a pool for either the Filecoin docs role or the IPFS docs role, which means we might actually get to hire two people, which would be super awesome. Um, but in the interest of confidentiality and candidate protection, um, hit me up outside of, outside of the public forum if you want to talk about this in more detail, um, but the news is looking good. So um, moving on to the personae, um, uh, Eric and I are speaking with folks from Textile and QRI um, just to, just for like a, like a 45 minute hour long open discussion about the personae, particularly like where they fit into those roles, both in terms of where they are now and as they were getting to know IPFS as a technology. Um, so I hope to get a little bit more validation or some changes done um, based on those conversations. I've also got um, trying to line up conversations with a couple of other really engaged partners working with Arcani and Dietrich to try to get those names. So watch that space, but we're starting to get, um, starting to get those discussions on the calendar. Um, and then finally, then, then I can shut up. Um, there are a whole bunch of new hot fixes on the Zen Hub board, which is great. Um, if you're not on Zen Hub, those are captured in issues in our both our repo, the docs repo, and in the IPFS website repo. Um, and those are all um, tagged with docs-IPFS. Is a, is a handy way of finding all of those issues. Um, so Eric got those on our books. I went through and I groomed them, categorized them according to how they may or may not have fit with particular OKRs, and then flagged the ones that, that were ripe for outside contribution with help wanted. So they are captured in there. Should you find yourself with some free time and feel like attacking some open issues, please go nuts. Um, yeah, front page quiz with metrics. Chris, back to you. Sure thing. Um... I don't have anything too exciting to show in this call because I think we need to summarize at a higher level how we're how we're going to uh, create some conclusions around this. But so far, uh, quiz is live. Uh, it's doing it's doing great. We've got the um, new profile set up and we've had roughly fifteen thousand interactions to date, which is allowing us to help understand uh, how people are basically funding through the website and what actions they are taking. I gave a, a, a short preview to a few people last weekend. Uh, last week, yeah. Not weekend and um, 
yeah, we, we just need to now work out how we can extract some, some of that data into our high level dashboard so we can monitor it on a daily basis or at least in a, in a sort of weekly um, migration, a cohort. Um, so I think that, that requires a call of its own and probably like an entire, uh, at least half hour. So <laughs> um, that's something to be concluded. But um, I know um, Eric and, and Jessica and myself will basically talk through this in a bit more detail this week as well. Um, and while we're kind of remote co-working, I'll join in. <laughs> Awesome. Um, proto school. Yeah, I think Jill is among our most exciting proto school updates this week. I've been kind of digging out from my vacation, so we haven't pushed too much on stuff, but there are some updates. I was out on vacation and then we had a missing week. So I threw in a couple, a, at least one Diogo thing in here as well. Um, so uh, Jill has access to Proto School. He needs access to the docs repo, um, things like the daily bot, and uh, I'm sure we'll think of more stuff as we go. So we'll make sure whoever are the admins get them added to those things. Um, one of the other things that was really exciting that happened this week is that we had an external contributor put a PR directly to the Proto School website instead of just opening an issue, which is super exciting for me. Um, that's awesome. And one of the biggest things I wrapped up was adding, I, I'll call it wrapped up. There are a couple of things missing, but I dug around and pinged people to try to find a bunch of slide decks from my PFS camp and made sure those are in both the repo for the specific workshop they're from and surfaced then and by redoing the format of the table in the readme. Um, that's kind of a first step of me going through all the IPFS camp content to see what fits best in Proto School, which I believe is a P0 for us this quarter um, and the next big thing there. And then one of the things that I think never got captured in this meeting is that Diogo went through and changed under the hood the way some of the structure works in Proto School. So if we, as we build new content, realize we need to change the name of a tutorial, it will no longer mess up the caching, the thing that lets you see like, oh, I passed, I started this lesson, I passed this lesson. It would have made you look like you had no history for a tutorial had we changed the title of it. So that has been fixed so that it won't cause that problem. Um, and there are a number of smaller things that are less docs related, including um, CSS fixes already from Jill. So we've got plenty that we're juggling as usual, but I think those are the highlights. Anything else you think of, Jill? No, not really. I think that's pretty much it that I know of. I added um, notes for um, Chris. I believe you can add Jill to the daily bot, I think, since you're the, the poobah for that. Um, Eric, do you mind adding him to Zen Hub? I don't think I can. I think that is do a, that. that flows through from GitHub. Oh, okay, okay. And then, um, Jill, he has been did you talk to Electric about getting uh, into the repo? I didn't get a, a chance uh, yet, but I will do that. I just added you to the, the docs team on GitHub since awesome. I have to that thing. I think that means that you now have right access to all of the repos that you need right access. If you find a repo where you don't, DM Electric. Um, but then you should be able to go to ZenHub, and I believe you just sign in using GitHub. You have to give it access to all of your private repos. Um, but other than that, it then should let you do all of the things you need to do through ZenHub. I do not think there's another step, right? I don't think so, but we'll find out. Um, Jill, I will just DM you on Slack the URL for our Zen Hub board, and I think the place to start is to just click on that link and see whether it lets you okay. in. Cool, cool, cool. Um, let's see. I believe that is all for now. Wow, we blew through this fast because it's only nine twenty-two in my local time zone. Um, uh, anything else anybody wants to add? We were remarkably efficient today. I actually saw something in my, the, I started that view course and I saw something on the instructor site that I could show you, which is cool. similar to something we're doing. Um, here. So it was just, it's similar in concept to what we might do to collect more information, but basically on every page of her notes, which is, you know, more or less the equivalent of docs, huh. just does it this way. 
and has, and that's the content gets pushed down. So you'd still be able to see the content that you wanted to comment on and has suggestions on what kind of suggestions are useful. Obviously, if someone knew how to do, how to fix stuff themselves in GitHub, you'd be passing on the opportunity to have them do that. But I thought it was just a neat little yeah. thing and she has it at the top of every page. Do you mind um, adding that, oh gosh, where's the GitHub issue? 250 is the one for the original implementation of it, isn't I it? I can take screenshots. This is password protected, but I can take screenshots and drop yeah, them. Yeah, 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 that would be amazing. Um, can you add that to issue 250? Yeah, no problem. Thank you. That's very, that's very slick. Nice, nice. Um, I guess the only other the only other note is that um, um, Eric and I are in person all day today and all day tomorrow. That is not friendly to those of you in the Europe time zone wise, um, but we were planning on just leaving an open channel. And so, if you would like to discuss anything with us, um, shoot shoot one or the other of us a DM, and we'll leave that channel open. I will join you later today. Perfect. 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 Um, I I believe that is all that we've got this week. Any anyone else with anything else? <laughs> I don't know about one of us should go see what's happening. <laughs> Sorry, there's screaming. Shouting wasps. What? There's <laughs> screaming down the hall. Err. I said the guy who sits next to me to see whether I should be concerned or not. I thought it sounded like kids playing, but hopefully, hopefully the apocalypse is not nigh. Chris, could you relink your awesome spreadsheet that tries to to um, list all of the features that we would need from a documentation tool, um, especially if, if the one that was our front runner is like a side project for some people at Facebook? It makes me a little bit nervous in terms of. Uh, having high confidence that uh, it will get better and better quickly and be supported well into the long term. We've definitely had that that yeah. struggle with Badger as a data store in GoIPFS where it's like, well, Badger does all these things really well, but it's, you know, kind of questionably, uh, you know, well-maintained and that is a, a struggle going yeah. forward for, for us to make use of it. So I would love to like make sure that we're our top five things that we're looking at are like we feel super super good about it yeah exactly that's the front of my mind as well because it's like what saves you in a short term will absolutely bite you in the long long run so it's just a case of um making sure we're, we're aware of um the, the the balance there um i mean the, 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 the saving grace so far is that they are trying to commission it on and push a lot of the projects to use uh to use the, the version two of the docusaurus as well so um there's a slow out like rollout process and they've got a whole channel on discourse it's like for dog fooding so they they but the way facebook sort of seems to be set up is like it's very similar to pl where you've got independent projects and teams that basically do their own thing and they can make a choice whether or not they wish to use it so um none of them so far have had any pushback so um but as i say it's not feature parity it's not there yet but, but it's still either of those are a big step on but which is why it brought me to view press um because as a platform or at least as a tool set it's actually way more well maintained and uh, have regular regular releases a bigger plug-in ecosystem um it's just it's just a matter of choice um and then there's a whole like bespoke development route which of course we have full control of but then <laughs> if we can get stuck down a rabbit hole ourselves then so and not always better off. So yeah, absolutely. Well, I'd like to summarize all of this in a in a post on um, on its own. I think it's a lot of information to conclude. The features wish list is really awesome. The thing I'd I'd wish next in the wish list is to like Prioritize. group into like P0s, P1s, P2s, or something. So that because that's a lot of features. And absolutely. let's not do the the classic like I'm going to just find the maximal coverage on my checklist. Like let's find the top the top that ones that are going to make or break it. Yeah, and that's that's on our list for today and tomorrow is to try to get that, you know, obviously it's not going to be a final decision in terms of prioritization, but we can at least sort of get these ranked a little bit. Yeah, is everything we have improved plus additional things that are missing that are key to long-term success. So I think that's kind of where we're aiming. But yeah, let's, um, let's all get that together in a doc and so we can have some comments around it. And well, I just remember actually, I won't be, I will be out next Monday. So I'll, it'd be good if we can get that doc together um, so we can let that um, propagate.
Filecoin is using view or view press or whatever, right? It, it yep. kind of as an experiment, I believe, Eva. So that people can see how well it works. All of these options are still going to allow us to put it on IPFS and make it fully accessible there, right? Possibly, but that is another caveat. It will be depending on the relative path issue, which is just to do with how we host it. So IPNS issues, of if we change the root path, then it could become, uh, it, it, I mean, it does get rendered out, which is great, um, but that will be another like asterisk in the plan that we need to make sure we are aware of. So um, for okay, sure, we can- That's a pretty, a pretty high requirement for us. So let's put that in a higher priority thing. Like if we're not able to share our own documentation over IPFS and I put our own websites on IPFS, like that's, yeah. that's in, yeah. So yeah, there's, there's like the side effect of um, the way we're trying to do things with the web is slightly uh, an alternative aspect to it. So I think that's it. It's like having those caveats in place so we know that how we can address it. Um, but it will load, they'll all load via IPNS. And uh, so that's the primary thing. We can host it on IPFS. It just may not be able to load it from a different route, but we need to thoroughly check all that. All right, now we are officially out of time. So um, we shall see all of the rest of you elsewhere on the internet. I shall say my goodbye as this big noisy truck drives by my house. Thank you everybody for your time. Talk to you soon. <laughs>